The year is 2022 and BlackBerry is finally dying. AMD and Samsung gearing up to give us the greatest ever. And Nvidia is making a nice $6.9 billion bet on their future. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find at this beginning of the year 2022. My goodness, friends, did you enjoy your New Year celebrations? Whether it was staying in bed like I was fast asleep or, you know, fireworks Hopefully you didn't blow any fingers off or blow anything else up. Just let me know what you did for New Year's down below in the comments and I'll let you know that finally, now, 2022, as of January 4th, so just in a day or so, BlackBerry will officially be shutting down their software, finally, for all BlackBerry devices running on BlackBerry 7.1 or earlier, or BlackBerry 10, or the operating system that was on the BlackBerry playbook. BlackBerry is saying that it will no longer reliably function as of January 4th, whether you're on Wi-Fi or cellular, they're just not guaranteeing that it's gonna work at all. Finally, it's dead. BlackBerry can now live in the dust. Obviously, this might not actually be the end that you're going to hear of the BlackBerry name, considering the parent company has switched to doing cybersecurity stuff, and they've also licensed off the rights to use the name in smartphones to other companies such as TCL, and then there's a company called Onward Mobility that's supposed to be making a BlackBerry device that's supposed to come out at some point. But as it stands, the official, official, official BlackBerry devices Kibosh, dead, gone, no more, no longer, all right? If you're living in the BlackBerry past, time to get in the hippity hoppity future of Samsung and AMD partnering up to bring us the Exynos chips that are gonna have RDNA 2 graphics. This is something we've been waiting for ever since the announcement was made many years ago at this point where we are going to get AMD's full product stack. Not only can they go up to a 6900 XT liquid cooled with the RDNA 2 architecture and even beyond that for the data center stuff, but they can come all the way down to a mobile phone processor. And based on benchmarks that we've seen out on the internet, it looks like it'll probably wipe the floor with essentially everything that's out there, especially in the graphics department. Samsung and AMD putting out this teaser saying, playtime is over, baby. And then there's this weird, Doctor Who creature. I guess he's rendered in CGI to show off the graphical fidelity of the next gen chip. A little weird as far as, you know, what the promotion is going for here, but I'm excited. January 11th is the announcement date that we're supposed to be having for this chip. So we've got CES coming on tomorrow, which we're going to be live streaming all of the keynotes from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel over here on the channel. So stay tuned for that. But then a week later, AMD is going to hit us with the double header combining with with Samsung to bring out that smart flagship chip processor thing that's gonna be going in the Exynos 2200. How hyped are you for this? Let me know down below in the comments. Will you potentially be buying the Galaxy S22 if it does have AMD inside? I don't know. Well, I also didn't know that this chip exists, but it's now popping up on AliExpress. AMD's Athlon 4150GE, which is an Athlon chip with Zen 2 cores, which AMD hasn't officially announced, is officially on sale, or was on sale over here on AliExpress. As you can see, it is sold out. Tom's Hardware pointing out that when they found out about it, there was only one left, and by the time your boy went to go try to purchase it, it was gone, couldn't get it at all. So now I'm stuck here with my failure, wondering what could have been on the lowest end chip of for a hundred and twenty dollars which is that's crazy that's a little too much but i was gonna get it to make content on it it would have been great do, do you want a zen 2 athlon is that in the wheelhouse of people who watch these videos let me know down below in the comments and while we're waiting on amd to come out with new stuff for ces tomorrow we've got some pictures coming out of the rembrandt apu setups that are going to be going into the laptops this is the ryzen 6000 potentially that could be going in here and you can see look at that bad boy chip you, we don't know anything about performance or anything like else like that, but here here's the picture of it. And I'm gonna give you a picture of the future. It's crypto stocks, Bitcoin down 1% to $47,000. Ethereum up 1% to $3,800. Dogecoin up half a percent to 17 and a half cents. Now let's go ahead and talk about the meme stonks, which by the way, we're about like a year out from the initial GameStop rally, which is just like, hilarious to me. I Eventually, I have to drop them off of this segment because there's like 
nothing that's happening here. And like, I still follow along with the subreddits like Super Stonks and Wall Street's bets to try to find exactly what the play is, what they're talking about, the reverse repo rate and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to keep my ear to the ground on this kind of stuff, but I, I'm probably on the year anniversary, I'll probably drop these guys off unless something actually happens. GameStop closing the year of 2021 down four and a half percent to be at 148.39. AMC closing down 6% to be at 27.20. But the hope for Square Enix is that crypto is just gonna keep going up, my friends, because they're gonna be introducing blockchain and NFTs and decentralized gaming somehow. That's according to the report that came out in a New Year's letter indicating that they're looking into blockchain technologies as a major strategic theme for this year and onwards for games that they could potentially implement them into without naming any titles or how they're gonna use the technology, but saying that they're gonna use token economies to foster self-sustaining game growth and that they would believe that some gamers wanted to play to contribute and blockchain games could allow people to do that and that this could be a great way of getting all of that done and the overheated trading that's going on could be changed from the tokens that they're gonna implement. All I have to say on this is none of this screams at all that they're gonna implement the technology the way that it's supposed to. It's going to be blockchain based, but not decentralized. No, why would they have a financial incentive to decentralize it? They would just have a centralized blockchain, which defeats the whole point, but the whole point is to make money. And so as long as you put the name blockchain in there, people are going to use it. NFTs, that's just microtransactions, baby. All right, with self-sustaining game economy, isn't Final Fantasy 14 doing all right? You toss a few NFTs in there and it's Honestly, honestly, the gosh dang same exact thing except for some key buzzwords. In order to have a truly decentralized NFT platform for tokens to be implemented in games, you would have to get game developers all to work together and they can barely even work together in house. Let's not even talk about how like Halo Infinite was nearly torn apart from the inside. You expect me that they're gonna work across from developer to developer? That's not even gonna even happen, baby. NFTs. Honestly, just, I get the technology, but where's the financial incentive to anybody to do anything besides centralize all of it? The, if you control the money, you control the money, and that's all these companies care about. It's their bottom lines to hit those quarterly reports to make sure everybody thinks that they're the bee's knees, baby. Wow. Brent to start off 2022. It's a great one, but you know what else is gonna be great? At least according to reports that are coming out on Tom's hardware, all right? We're looking forward to Intel's new NUX. Maybe some of you are, I don't know, but we're potentially, according to these pictures, getting one with an LGA 1700 socket. This is a pretty big deal because NUX are typically things that you don't replace the CPU in, but this one, look at that bad boy. You can, after you clean off that thermal paste, that actually opens up a whole new world of technology for NUX. You could potentially hot swap and build out smaller components and get all of that going in the way that you want to, as opposed to being stuck with whatever, you know, the pre-built company that they give you. Sent it structure there was a little off, but I got it done. And Samsung, we talked about their, you know, smartphone stuff. This is a completely different division, but they're getting it done, all right? They're hitting home with the greatest thing. Oh, I can't afford this. I know I can't afford this, but I'm gonna talk about it anyways. The Neo G8 4K 240 hertz mini LED monitor. And it doesn't even stop there, right? 32 inches, 4K resolution, 1000 R curve. It looks like all of the other Odyssey Neos that they've been releasing, like the G9, that's the super ultra wide. But this bad boy has quantum mini LED, which is just means that it's gonna have HDR 2000 in a 12 bit brightness setup. 4K 240, 2000 nits, this is, I love it. I want one. It's I if I had to guess, it's probably gonna be in that two thousand dollar ish range, which is too much money for me because I think the most money I've ever personally spent on a monitor was like five hundred dollars, and that was because it had like HDR six hundred and like I could calibrate it properly for editing videos, not to game on. Uh, I guess I've spent more on a TV. I've spent like $600 on a TV before. I think I just said that for the monitor though. I don't really track my monitor purchases very well. Anyways, too much for me, never gonna buy it, but will you buy Nvidia's next GPUs? At least they're hoping you will at some point. And we have the date for their upcoming GTC keynote, which will feature an in-person Jensen, not at his home baking up some GPU goodness, but rather serving it to you live at GTC. It's going to be taking place 
in March. You can sign up for that now for either virtual or in person March 21st through 24th for the GTC keynote. We're expecting them to potentially announce Hopper or probably not as much, but Ada Lovelace being announced by them at this to let us know where they're going to be taking NVIDIA's GPU technologies into the future. And it looks like they're betting big on that future because new reports are coming out at the price that they have to pay to get back into TSMC's good graces because they defected to Samsung to produce all of their Turing GPUs that are currently out there. According to reports, they've been having to pay hefty sums to TSMC to secure wafer space, specifically five nanometer wafer space, 1.64 billion in Q3 2021, 1.79 billion in Q1 2022, but 6.9 billion as a longer term deal to make sure that they can have enough five nanometer allocation and not have it all given away to Apple and AMD and everybody else, NVIDIA, trying to buy their way back into TSMC, according to the latest reports. And the latest reports are that we're supposed to get a 3090 Ti announced by NVIDIA tomorrow at CES, but there's reports coming out that the Kingpin card made by EVGA is gonna be a behemoth because of the power inputs that it's gonna require. According to the reports, it's not gonna be 380 pins, it potentially will be two of NVIDIA's proprietary 12 pins or the 16 pins that have been floating out there that could be tied to PCI Express 5.0, although the card won't be PCI Express 5.0. But the whole point is that's going to have a lot of pins, all right, because those 12 pins were two 8 pins converted into the NVIDIA 12 pin, and you get, that's four 8 pins. This is going to suck a lot of juice. The 3090 Ti Kingpin likely going to be the toppest of toppest GPUs that could be out on the market. And I can't top this episode of Hot News, all right, because it's just done, all right? We have tomorrow, which is going to be the CES live stream that's going to be live here at the normal time that we have everything for Hot News for breakfast at 9 a.m. Eastern. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be streaming here as well as over on Twitch. Look forward to seeing you there. And with that being said, happy freaking new year, everybody. Hopefully 2022 is at least fun. I'm not gonna say better, I just want it to be exciting in like a good way. I'm okay with bad things happening as long as it was enjoyable. Oh boy, see you tomorrow.